Well, welcome back to Mr. Rob Steve's Vintage Homesteading Channel. This will be our second video on chainsaw chains. And so this will be mostly about obsolete chains that they used back in the day. So first of all, I just want to talk briefly again about the last video where we went over all the common chains that they have today. And they all have one thing in common. They're all based on a design that came out in 1948 was patented in 1947 and put on the market in 48 and that's the chipper chain. That's what we use on almost every cha chainsaw chain today. So anyway, the earliest chains were based on handsaw blades. And this one is off what's called a drag saw which is a motorized version that was what was used more often than not pre-war and a little bit after the war World War II and then basically just a this is a gasoline powered handsaw basically all you're talking about if this were a regular handsaw it had handles on each end or one big handle on one end and the teeth you get a cutter a right and a left cutter and you cut the height of these to do the same as a raker. Now the early chainsaw chains didn't have a raker gauge on them. And the thing that would gauge how fast they would cut is how much down pressure you could put on them. So uh, it was a difficult job running a big, heavy, unreliable saw with a chain. It took a lot of ephus to put it into the wood to cut it. So anyway, the early chains were what they call scratcher chains and basically and basically it scratched the wood out and the biggest drawback to them is that you can't cut with the grain they only cut cross grain and so the other bad thing about these saws is since they're based on a handsaw, they have to be sharpened by a master sawyer, someone who would take the saws in at night and hand file them. And so if you were out in the woods and you had a scratcher chain on your big old saw, you hit a rock or something like that, unless you were really good at sharpening it, you just would have to take a whole bunch of chains because to sharpen these takes quite some time. So when the chipper chain came out, everything was obsolete from that point on. And so that's, the chipper chains are the ones we use today. The Chainsaw Collectors Forum, and here's a section on chainsaws and chains. And if you go to the chain section, it's an alphabetical listing. And go down towards the bottom and look at some of those. And they have some really good pictures of the different type of teeth and how they evolved and the definition of them. So anyway. So the chains we use today, quarter inch, 325, 3 8 low profile, standard 3 8 and 404. And what they used to be, the chains were a lot, lot bigger. And this is one of the smaller ones here. This is 7 16 of an inch pitch. And you can see the great big long cutters and the great big teeth on it. And Early saws like this were relatively low horsepower, so they were almost always gear reduction. So you had a great big tooth which had a lot of drag, and you had a relatively low chain speed. And so they didn't cut very fast, but they were a whole lot faster than a hand saw. A lot less difficult to operate too if you're savvy enough to keep one of these old hogs running. This saw here. It's kind of an interesting piece. This is a Type Model 30 that was made in Seattle. And a 1954 model, 77cc, uses a West Bend engine, which is a proprietary motor, a bought out motor. The early Titans, the engines and everything were made in house. And the things that changed chainsaws to make them viable number one was the chipper chain. 
Number two is a pumper carburetor. Now this one has a real unique carburetor on it. This is a Tillotson Model H. And it has a diaphragm there that pumps the fuel. And then the crankcase is hooked up to the fuel tank and pressurizes it so that you could cut it sideways or something like that, where the earlier ones you couldn't do that. So anyway, I'll come back and talk about carburetors a little bit more. So anyway, this is kind of the smallest size of the big chains and this is considered a basically a farm homeowner saw. This basic chainsaw here is one that revolutionized the chainsaws. In 1949, McCulloch came out with a Model 325, which is 3 horsepower and 25 pounds. And that was considered lightweight, and it was for its time, because a lot of the big saws from the same era weighed 40 or 50 pounds that were considered a one-man saw. So anyway, there again, the chains started devolving. This is 8 sixteenths to the inch, or in layman's terms, half inch. So the difference, since the chain itself doesn't look a whole lot different from the 7 sixteenths, the teeth are quite a bit bigger. And that's, and there again, this, what revolutionized the saw was the carburetors. This one, McCulloch started experimenting with pumper carburetors in the first ones, the 325, this happens to be a model. 47, which is just a later version of it, but the carburetor could pump fuel with a saw sideways, which before they had float feed carburetors, and so the blade would turn. I'll show you that in a minute, but anyway, there was lots of variations on the same theme as far as the chain went. A lot of the different manufacturers started making their own chain, including McCullough, they called it Pintail, and uh, anyway, so like I say, the things that made these things viable was first of all the chain and second of all a all position carburetor and lighter weight okay this saw here this has 9 16 inch chain and the teeth are there again quite a bit bigger and but the other thing too is on the last saw you saw that the bar it was fairly wide, and they did that for rigidity, but also created a lot of drag, so the bar started evolving too, and we'll go into that in a little bit more here. But So this is a 1952 IEL, Industrial Engineering Limited Pioneer, the model DB. This still has a float feed carburetor, it's a 1952 model. So this one, yeah. You have to rotate the bar if you want to cut sideways. And so that was how they got around to not having to pay for a different carburetor. And like I say, the Tillotson that changed the world in chainsaws and two-stroke engines in general is a Tillotson model HL. Now the H would pump fuel in but it didn't draw fuel in. This one has a fuel pump built into it as well as pumping it into the carburetor. So that made saws. You could flip them upside down, run them upside down, sideways, or what are all positions. That was the other thing that changed the chainsaw industry forever. So anyway, it's a gear drive to, like I say, ch slow chain speed. Most of these early saws run about between four and 5,000 RPM. They usually have from three to five horsepower. But the gear reduction gives it a lot more torque so they could run a big chain like this with a lot of drag on it. And cut. So. talk about the bars here in a second but all the early saw bars had hard face tips they didn't have roller tips or anything like that that hadn't been invented yet and you can see how big these chains are they're massive look at those big teeth 
like I say, the saws didn't have a lot of horsepower, so they had to have torque, and with the gear reduction, they could pull the chain like this, but just dragging this big chain through the wood was a lot of drag, and so chainsaw technology changed very quickly, higher RPM, bigger displacement, and lots more horsepower. So anyway, let's talk about bars here. And let's just do a quick comparison here. This is 3 8 This is what everybody uses today. I mean, look at the difference in these. Thing is, these will cut faster than these big old saws. Saw chains do. Anyway. Like I say, all the early ones were hard tip. They used stellite, which is a hard surfacing material. And how the, they build a lot of heat and they actually use a bit of horsepower to run them. So the early chainsaws didn't have automatic oilers. So you have to pump the oil a whole lot to keep these things viable. And if you pump a lot of oil on, they'll last and last. And they actually have a use in modern use. This is a modern hard tip. McCulla bar, 20 inch. My buddy Dan from Kane Custom Garage had this on one of his 10 tents and he didn't like it because of the horsepower drag so he put a sprocket nose on it and stuff and I didn't have a short bar like this for doing bore cuts so I'm going to take one of my McCulloch Pro Max 610s and put this on and use that for bore cutting where I just jam it through the tree and in certain applications if we're out in the trees on the ground and stuff that way you can cut towards the bottom and cut up and then roll it and do the last cut. And, but the reason I like these there again is you know you have to run a lot of oil on it, but that hard surfacing, as long as you keep it lubed, will take a lot of stress and the chain won't suffer. But there again, you gotta use a lot of oil on them. And the 610s have a manual override, so you're always pumping lots of oil on it. You cleaned this up really nice, so thanks Dan. Remember, one man's junk is somebody else's better junk. Mm -hmm. This is one of the first bars where that they were experimenting with. A, it's called a roller nose. It has a bearing in here, and you can lube it through a fitting in there, but hole through there, I should say. But this takes a whole lot less horsepower to run on a hard nose because of the re reduction in friction. These are, was a 42 inch here. You run it on my still 075, the 051, either one. But these, uh, I really like the looks of these and the way they look when they're running. This is my favorite bar. It's not the best bar for certain applications. They're not really good for doing bore cuts. There again, a hard nose is the best. There again, you can see they're still pretty wide. Of course, the new ones are fairly small. And this one has a sprocket tip. That's what we all use today. Okay, well, the last thing I wanted to talk about on modern chains briefly was the cost. And the thing is, it is all kinds of chains out there with all fancy names and stuff and a lot of them are made in China. They don't last very long, they don't hold an edge very good and stuff. They're cheap but I wouldn't recommend them. So the two that I use, mostly Oregon, get a couple of Carlton chains which I don't really particularly like all that much either. And then this is a steel chain. But the thing that I don't like about the steel chain is probably the best out there but it's almost double the cost of Oregon but it doesn't last twice as long it only lasts marginally longer than the Oregon so I don't see any paint point to it they've come out with that new one it's called hexa which has a hexagonal tooth on it and it's supposed to cut 10% better than your standard chains so I thought well I'll look into it so it's absolutely double the cost of an Oregon chain to get me maybe in perfect conditions 10% 10 10 better cutting ability. So what do I have to say about that? Ah, the heck with it. Well, 
Well, we had to cut and run because the hailstorm came in on us just out of nowhere, and we got another one right behind it coming in. So anyway, I just wanted to say thanks for watching. 2,100 subscribers. It's great for us because you know we only put out a video once a week. And like I say, go back and watch our older videos. There's lots of different things we cover. So if you have questions, but the other thing I wanted to get some feedback on is the length of our videos. When we first started doing them, they were about 10, 12, 15 minutes long. They average about 20 to 25 minutes now. So I'd like to hear from you what length of videos you like best. And if the 22 plus ones are too long, we can cut them into two sections, do two separate videos. So let me know. Remember, vintage is best. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you soon.